So, just while on the topic of the XOR, uh, we could also look at, um, you know, a simple implementation of the XOR gate using the NAND2 gate, okay. So, this is A, B, I have Y, XOR 2 equal to A, B bar plus A bar B, right. This is what I want and I need to implement this using um, NAND2 gates, okay. So, what do I do now, right. So, you can try one implementation, right. So, it is the moment you have an OR, the simplest thing to do is to make this double bar plus A bar B double bar, right. I am not changing the Boolean uh, functionality here. This is nothing but A B bar uh, whole bar into A bar B whole bar whole bar. Right? So, if you want to, if this is a little difficult to follow, you just say a b bar equal to y1 and a bar b equal to y2, right. Then effectively your y uh, x or 2 will reduce to y1 or y2. I am saying replace this by y1 double bar or y2 double bar. This is equal to y1 bar into y2 bar whole bar, right. This is nothing but a very simple uh, OR gate being convert converted into a, you implemented using a NAND gate with the inputs inverted, right. So, that is all I am saying here. So, therefore, uh, now each operation A, B bar, A bar, B and all are indeed, uh, you know, the uh, NAND operations, right. Everything is a NAND gate here. And therefore, technically, it should be possible to implement it like this. So, you start like this, um, A and I will feed B bar here, okay. And then I am going to do um, A bar and B, okay. And uh, this one again is a XOR2, right. However, what we are, so it seems like we can implement the XOR gate, two input XOR gate with just three NAND2 gates. That is not entirely true because we, we need to generate A bar and B bar. Okay. So, therefore, this needs to be generated using a NAND2 gate like this. A. Okay. So, technically, we were able to implement this XOR2 gate using 5 NAND2 gates, okay. The number of NAND2 gates is 5. So, it turns out there is a simpler implementation for this, okay. Like this, you can do it with 4 NAND2 gates. y x or 2, right. So, what happens here? You get a b whole bar and then you are anding, nanding again with this thing. So, what you are doing here is you are doing a uh, into a b whole bar whole bar. Out here you are doing b into a b whole bar whole bar and then so, this expression if you simplify, you will basically get uh, A bar plus 
a b uh, is that right yes you will get a bar plus a b here you will get this as b bar plus a b again okay and this is nothing but a bar plus b and this is nothing but a plus b bar okay and therefore this final output uh, again you can write this as uh, this you can also write as a b bar whole bar right and this you can write as a bar b whole bar right and therefore you can get the y xor 2 eventually as uh, a b bar plus a bar b okay so again uh, the the focus is to reduce the gate count because one it will reduce the area hopefully it will also give you some advantages in delay as we will see later right so therefore uh, the the point i'd like to impress from this particular lecture is that many times you will be constrained by what is available for your implementation right and you should know how to find us uh, an optimal implementation with those available gates right and proceed with your uh, you know design okay so formally you know i could say implement a logic circuit okay with only nand 2 gates right? this, this is the only gate available but any number of gates you need are available to you okay Alternately, I could say you will also have access to a NOR2 gate. Okay. Sometimes I might say you can have access to an inverter, a NAND2, and a NOR2. Right. Or I could say XOR also. You have access to an XOR gate. Okay. Now, this uh, list of gates which are available to you okay is what people call the standard cell library it's a, it's called a standard cell library because the elementary logic gates that are available to you are some fixed set of gates like this here in this case inverter nand2 nor2 or you know they might also provide nand3 nor3 okay usually you will be provided with logic gates up to four inputs that is nand2 nand3 nand4 nor2 nor3 nor4 okay XOR2, yes, maybe, right? And there might be more sophisticated cells available, but <coughs> whatever design I now give you, you have to somehow find a way to implement it with only these gates and hopefully with the least gate count, right? Now, the problem of finding the most optimal solution for a given, uh, uh, you know, for a given Boolean expression is not. Uh, you know, it's not obvious or not trivial. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the that process of taking a, a functionality or a truth table down to its simplest Boolean expression, right, <coughs> is not even doable using K maps because you know many times it will involve large number of Boolean literals, not just four, five, six, or something, and therefore you need algorithms to actually reduce the Boolean expression, but the point I am trying to make is the Boolean expression has to eventually be implemented using a fixed set of gates which are available to you in the standard cell library. Okay, And uh, therefore, you not only now need to think of AND or NAND NOR, but you also need to think of the idea uh, of a 
XOR gate, right? Sometimes if the XOR gate is available, right? For example, we had seen one example earlier, right? We said uh, it is A B bar plus A bar B, okay, into C. Let us say this is one, uh, you know, a Boolean function that I want to implement, okay. Clearly, you already know that this A B bar plus A bar B happens to be the XOR function. Therefore, if I want to implement this with least number of gates, I should be using the XOR gate because that is available in the standard cell library, okay. And then I need to go ahead and implement into C, okay. Now, the AND function I cannot implement directly because I need, I have to think in terms of NAND, which means I need to create C, right, uh, and then follow that up with an, with an inverter, right. Essentially, uh, this is the, this is effectively my AND and to gate, right. So, I will get uh, this thing here and yeah, exactly, okay. So, this is the simplest implementation for the Boolean function given here, given this standard cell library. Now, if I took the XOR gate off, if I remove this XOR gate from the standard cell library, of course, your implementation will change significantly. You might have to go and implement the XOR2 using this 4 NAND gate XOR implementation and then go ahead and this thing. So, here if I just go by the gate count, uh, the gate count is 3, 1 XOR2, 1 NAND2, 1 inverter. If I removed this XOR2 from this equation and said the standard cell library, does not even contain the XOR2 gate, then I have to do, you know, that the previous implementation, the XOR will be replaced with that, which has four NAND gates, right. Uh, this is with XOR2, without XOR2, the gate count would be uh, 4 into and 2 for the uh, XOR implementation uh, plus 1 NAND, you know, the for the multiplying with C plus 1 inverter, right. So, therefore, the gate count is 4 plus 2, 6. The gate count will therefore increase from 3 to 6 if I just took this XOR2 gate out of this standard cell library, right. Uh, so, with that, I would like to uh, wind up this discussion on, uh, you know, thinking in terms of NANDs and NORs and um, in the next lecture, we will move on to more uh, sophisticated circuits that we will be using. Of course, we will build them with the AND OR, NAND OR and so on, but these are circuits that we will be using in practice uh, in our designs, uh, especially in a microprocessor.